I'm Gloria Goins, and my gift is vision. 18 months ago, I stood in this very room with about 100 other Bon Secours leaders, members of our board, our sisters, and a sprinkling of external guests. And in that moment, we were all reminded that the mission and ministry of Bon Secours is just as relevant, is just as needed, is just as powerful today as it was 190 years ago, as it will no doubt be 190 years from now. And that is because about 20 miles from here, the city of Baltimore had erupted in riots. And several of our leaders from Baltimore couldn't make the summit. Several of them left early. Some of our guest speakers called and said, I'm not sure I should come. There was confusion. There was chaos. There were cries for help from people who have long been marginalized, disenfranchised, and forgotten. And in that moment, I reflected on something that Martin Luther King said. He said, a riot is the language of the unheard. And many times in our ministry, I ask our leaders to ask themselves, whose voice is missing? Who's not being heard? Who's not being seen? And how much longer can we afford to do that? So in the context of our sixth annual summit, it has to be as heavy on your minds and on your hearts as it is on mine. What seems to be almost a daily news story about racial animus, rioting, senseless killing, some phobia, homophobia, ethnophobia, Islamophobia. And so in preparation of the summit, I spent some time scouring headlines and news stories to find a quote or a statement that could best represent the heartbeat of what's going on in our country and in our world. Something that could be a beacon of light. Something that could remind us all that we are stewards of the gifts that God gave us. And that there will come a point in time where we'll be asked to account for what we did with those gifts. And I say that in the context of someone who's a mother, someone who's a grandmother, someone who's a great grandmother, meaning my grandchildren have children. And we can thank Mr. Goins for that. But there will come a time where we'll have to account for what did we do differently as people who convened to share our gifts. And so I want to share with you a quote that I found um, from a woman named May Bartlett, and I want to set the context for this quote. Miss Bartlett at the time was the president of the California Human Relations Commission, the mission of which is to eliminate prejudice and discrimination in California through building awareness and other kind of education programs. And this particular quote comes from January, um, Los Angeles Times, what was going on is a great deal of what we hear about in the news today, a lot of rioting, a lot of crime, a lot of vandalism, a lot of racial animus. And so Ms. Bartlett said the following that I think is really apropos for our summit. LA County is a world community. We have an opportunity to be a model for the world. 
but hate crimes intentions show ways that we haven't achieved that. Even the recent vandalism at four churches constitute a hate crime. The vandalism was aimed at the Catholic Church, who tracks most of LA County's hate crimes for the commission. It is possible for people of varying cultures to live together. We don't have to eliminate other cultures. No one culture is better than another. I think we can live together in harmony. I want that to be our call. Because there will come a point where we'll be asked by future Bon Secours employees and future employees of our respective organizations for our, our external guests, what did you do with your gifts? What did you do when you convened for a day and a half in the spirit of diversity and inclusion that made a difference, that awakened the world? What did you do? And the reason why this quote is so apropos is because although the quote was made in January, it wasn't January 2016, as I may have initially led you to believe. You see, that quote was made almost three decades ago, three generations ago. So what will we do with our gifts and talents that will fundamentally change a world that so desperately needs them? That's the question we're going to ask ourselves over the next day and a half. I want to join Leishi in thanking all of our sponsors, all of our internal guests, or external guests that came. And please know that we did not invite you because we have all the answers. We do not. In fact, we're hoping that we can shamelessly steal from you. But what I fundamentally believe is that the heart of why we're all here is that we recognize at Bon Secours that we won't be able to fulfill our mission and ministry with just the gifts and talents of the people who work at Bon Secours. We must collaborate. And I fundamentally believe that, you see, it's relatively easy to break a finger, but much more difficult to break a fist. And so when we combine our gifts and our talents with your gifts and your talents, we move that much closer to eliminating population disparities and healthcare disparities. We move that much closer to ensuring that all people and the divinity and the humanity they bring is included and respected in our respected organizations, but also in the broader community. So thank you all for being here and sharing your most precious gift, which is your time.